You may think your hotel is already green, but are you green enough for today's eco-conscious traveler? Welcome to the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast, your destination to learn from hospitality professionals on the value and opportunities sustainability will bring to your organization. It will put more heads in beds and lower costs at the same time. We are your hosts and sustainable hospitality experts, Kathy McGuire and Amy Walls. I'm your host, Kathy McGuire. In this episode, we talk with Chef John Noble Massey, who is on the faculty of Florida International University's Chaplin School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, and specifically their restaurant and culinary management program. We discuss the many ways to reduce waste in the kitchen and repurpose food for another meal. Enjoy the episode. Welcome, everyone. We have with us as our guest speaker today, Chef John Noble Massey. He's on the Faculty of Culinary Industry Consulting and Teaching Assistant Professor at Florida International University's Chaplin School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. Chef, welcome. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'm glad to be here. Terrific. Uh, the first thing I wanted to ask you um, about is about sustainability um, food sourcing. So what considerations um, do you need to make when sourcing food for, for example, a meeting of, or group of people? Sure. Well, I, th I think it all starts with having a plan and, and that plan should focus on uh, what I think are probably the two most important things. And that is uh, your location, uh, the menu, uh, and well, three things, location, the menu, and, se and, and, and seasonality. So location, you know, we're in Florida, we've got a lot of awesome, wonderful produce. We should be using all of that produce. And, and same thing with, with seafood. Uh, if, we if you're in a meeting and, and you have a, a guest that in Florida is requesting salmon for their fish on a menu or, or beautiful apples, and fall. Those are those are are great, uh, but we've got awesome citrus for the fruit, and we've got awesome local fish for the seafood. So your location matters, and just the opposite. If I were in New York, and you're you're uh, you, you've got awesome apples up there this time of year, and I remember going apple picking and those kind of things. So, uh, and then there's beautiful uh, cod and other. Uh, local seafood in Northeast, lots of freshwater fish uh, up, up, in, up in New York, that's, that, that's sustainable. So location, uh, seasonality, get something at its ripest when it's in the best possible uh, season. Uh, similar down here in Florida, mangoes are a wonderful summer fruit. Strawberries are a nice winter fruit down here. This is our strawberry season. So put those on the menu uh, during the right season. And then the menu, build in flexibility to change that up. If you permanently put something on your menu that is not sustainable or is not seasonal, then, then I think you're, 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 you're locked into that. So I love to build in flexibility to my menus to, to add to that sustainability. That's wonderful. So how do you minimize or repurpose food waste during your prep work? The, 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 the same thing, uh, I think it, it comes with a, with a plan or some thoughtfulness. I try to make sure uh, that, uh, you know, if I'm having a chicken dish on the menu, that I'm using the whole chicken. I'm using the breast for uh, center of the plate entree, or uh, if it's buffet, then I'm, I'm using those breasts uh, that I'm uh, serving for the luncheon. I'll debone the thighs and the leg meat to use in a chicken salad that could be used in a luncheon or a chicken stir fry that could be used for something else. And then I'll use the bones and the carcass to, to make a nice stock for a soup. So planning and purchasing, planning that on my menu and having those items. Okay. I'm going to center plate chicken entree. I'm going to add a chicken salad to my lunch selection and I'm, and, or a stir fry. And then I have this really wonderful soup as well. And particularly, mm -hmm. You know, today in South Florida, it's, uh, you know, 50 degrees. So soup would actually be quite nice down here now. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, one of the other things I was wondering about, um, I saw some photographs where um, 
uh, there were it was signage actually in mm-hmm. front of some um, some things on um, that were um, on the buffet table where you had repurposed them from like the meal before. So tell us about how you how you uh, manage that and go through that. And I love uh, the fact that you put the signage there so people know. So tell us a little bit about that. Thank you. Thank you so much for for noticing that. that. We we really put a lot of thought and energy into uh, doing that um, event, and it was done in. Uh, in partnership from the work that we had done with the James Beard Foundation and then additional work with the World Wildlife uh, Foundation. Uh, again, it kind of starts with the plan. Uh, we have the, the benefit of having a brewing arts class on, on campus where, where they're use, using grains uh, to uh, prepare the beer. Uh, those spent grains, barley and, and other grains, they actually gave to our baking and pastry uh, chef and he made a wonderful bread out of that. We served that bread in the morning, and then uh, with some lovely jams and and uh, and butters and flavored cream cheese. From that, then it went into uh, a bread pudding that I made in the in the evening for that I used some so spent grains to the bread and the leftover bread to a bread pudding mm-hmm. where I was using. Uh, carrot peelings uh, and and some leftover and some other leftover pastries from breakfast. I combined the leftover toasts along with uh, I think there were some leftover cinnamon buns and and some leftover over over uh, croissants, and so those could easily be made into a, a a sweet bread pudding, and then so that it's not identifiable as something that was left over. Mm-hmm. I. I totally repurposed it by adding the carrot, uh, the carrot peeling cut up really finely, or you can grind them up, adding some traditional uh, carrot cake spices, cinnamon clove, a little bit of ginger, and made a really nice cream cheese um, glaze for it and and baked off this wonderful uh, sweet carrot cake bread pudding. So uh, it starts with the planning and then having an idea of what you're going to do. There's for that event, we we also uh, focused on other things. There, are all of the international cuisines, um, particularly in the Caribbean or, or uh, the the more rural areas of Italy, they all do things on a nat- naturally culturally that lend themselves well to repurposing items in the Caribbean. I've been down there and done some consulting and they talk about serving uh, boiled yam one day, whatever's left over, they're frying and, and serving in a different way the next day. In my travels to Italy, they take that leftover bread that I was making in the bread pudding and they're turning it into a panzanella salad, uh, leftover crusts of bread. And they're doing other things as well, but but some of these uh, cultures are doing it at, out of necessity and then they turn it and elevate that dish into really something nice. So as long as you have that thought and plan in place, I think it's, it's, it's much easier to do. One of the things in working in hospitality that I've noticed that sometimes there's a, a disconnect between like the sales team, you know, your catering and your group business salespeople, they want to give the client what they want. Um, I've always found that if you want to be sustainably minded, that you offer a menu up first because it's local, seasonal, and has all of the components that you just described to us about being able to repurpose the food in other ways. Um, how, how do you find that? And how do you work with people? And is it, is it kind of difficult to get them to, and of course the client will get what they want if they want you know, the salmon flown in, you want the business, so you're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. But um, how, how do you manage that interaction between two different departments? That's an that's an absolutely awesome question, Kathy. I appreciate you asking that because I think it's something that that is real life and people deal with all the time. Uh, my advice would be: any client is coming to you as the expert, and if you have built up trust along the way with that client, either through previous events or or, or other or other events then hopefully they will trust in you to make that, that recommendation. You've got to start somewhere. And, and, and if they are want to stick with that salmon on the menu, 
and say, you know, maybe may, may, I'm happy to do a tasting or something like that that introduces you to uh, this local seafood, which you may not be familiar with. Great idea. So, so, so salespeople, be salespeople, right? And, and the idea of, uh, you know, I, I, I refer to this all, all, all the time when I talk with my students. I say, you can either be an order taker or, uh, you know, be proactive and suggest those things. How many times have you been to a restaurant, you turn to a server and say, yeah, well, you know, I'm looking at the menu, what do you recommend? And so there may be people that, that, that have the same thing all the time and they, they're, they're in that box, but when they go out to a restaurant, they may ask that, that, that server what they recommend. So if you take that same approach in the, in the meeting world and planning meetings, then I think I, I think that will that will serve those uh, salespeople well. Oh, that sounds great! What a great idea. Um, for my last question, I wanted to ask you: How do you create a culture that's committed to food waste reduction and management? Because I mean, you know, you have a lot of you know employees and and things like that in in a hotel and um, working different shifts, and you may not always be there. It may be someone else who's in charge. How do you get all that together so that everybody's on the same page? Another great question. I, I think it I think it all starts with leadership and the culture, and you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And so, having a focus on it. And talking about it does wonders. I always, when I talk with with my students again, I always refer to the the, the late Anthony Bourdain, uh, who was a alumnus of the Culinary Institute of America, where I went to school. And he was passionate about many things, but he was not passionate for causes. He wasn't. He didn't want to champion anything. He just wanted to make you happy eating. Yeah. But, but. He was trained by some really awesome European chefs that told him, don't waste, don't waste anything. And so by that mantra of not wasting anything, he turned that into how, how many ways can we use this leftover product? And, and there's a wonderful documentary called Wasted uh, that, that he hosts that is a, a great hour or 90 minutes, whatever, I, I forget how long it is, but it, I, I, would, I would recommend anyone to show your team that video. And uh, if you don't get, if your team does not get inspired by, by watching that and hearing his ideas, then I would suggest that you maybe uh, need to focus on getting the right people on your team. That makes really good sense. Is there anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't talked about already? No, I, I, I think I think a lot of the goals for stain of sustainability, uh, you'll, the, this next generation is, is significantly more proactive than than, than we are and uh, or that we were growing up. Uh, you know, certainly it's passionate for us now and, and, and at our university, we're, we're taking it very seriously. Uh, I incorporate that into my uh, grading of students. I grade them on not only presentation and taste and portion and temperature of the food that they present in front of me for a grade, but I also grade them on, on how well they utilize their waste and that there's nothing left over. So it starts with us, got to start somewhere. And that's I look right. The future. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. What a great way to go. Chef John Noble Massey, Florida International University's Chaplain School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you very much and take care. My pleasure, Kathy. Thank you for joining us today on the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like a free consultation on becoming a much greener hotel, please visit us at sustainablehospitalitypodcast.com.